bias binding is the best option when you are going around weird angles like a hexagon or curves on the edge of your quilt. It can also look super cute if you want diagonal stripes. Hashtag put a stripey binding on it. There are lots of ways to make bias binding, but I find most of them to be inefficient, either wasting fabric or time. Marking and scissors? No thank you. Hi, I'm Bobby from The Geeky Bobbin. Lucky for you, my friend Anjanette Klinder and I developed this fast, efficient, and fun formula to make as much continuous bias binding as you need with only two seams, a long ruler, and a rotary cutter. Let's go. So the first thing I need to do is I need to check how much binding I need. Uh, if your pattern doesn't tell you, you can look it up on the magical rainbow of binding just by looking at the width and length of your quilt, find the color on this side, and that'll tell you how many strips if you're doing straight of grain and how much yardage depending on your strip width. Okay, so I know that I need a half yard. That's what I've got here. I've got this beautiful striped fabric. So I've just trimmed off my selvages and the raw edge. I'm gonna take my yardage and I'm going to make a cut somewhere in the middle at a 45 degree angle. This stripe makes it nice and easy because my 45 degree line can be lined up just about anywhere. big long cut 45 degree angle and then I'm going to take the two straight edges and I'm going to sew them together seam is pressed open the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make some slits parallel to this diagonal cut that I did okay, the very first cut that I do I'm going to Cut all the way from one end, but I'm going to stop an inch or two away from this end. That's just for the very first one. Okay, I like my binding to be two and a quarter inches wide, so I've marked my ruler here just to make it a little bit easier to see. You can see I used a whiteboard marker, so I lined up my red line, my two and a quarter inch line. I'm holding down my ruler. I'm cutting from the very beginning and I'm leaving a gap. So this is like a floppy end here. I'm going to line up my two and a quarter inch line and this time I'm going to leave an inch or two at the bottom and at the top. So I'm not slicing through the ends. Leave a couple inches. Leave a couple inches. And now I just keep on going. I'm gonna move it along. And each time I'm lining up my ruler with the slit from before, leaving a couple inches. And leaving a couple inches. Okay, so I don't have two and a quarter left here. I'm gonna actually trim this whole thing off for that last one. Looks like we got a little crooked somehow, that's okay. that right off okay this is scrap cutting that off all the way bye bye so my last cut I'm cutting all the way through the top okay so now what I have first one starts like this last one ends like this all right so now we are going to stitch 
this straight edge with this straight edge. And they're going to be right sides together. We only have to do two seams for this whole thing. We want to offset by a quarter inch. So we want to have a quarter inch seam allowance and we're going to start stitching in that V. So I'm going to stitch all the way down. Do, 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 do. Stitchy, stitchy, stitch. Stitchy, stitchy, stitch. All right. So that long line has been stitched. I'm going to press my seam open. Okay, so pressing this open is a little bit weird because I've got this whole mess of stuff going on, but trust me, it worked out just fine. And I'm gonna lay it down right side up and you'll be able to see if I move these loops out of the way a little and grab any small ruler, I just need to connect these two slits. Got my rotary cutter. And here we go. One. Connect the dots. Okay, last one. Get your finger out of the way, Bob. Okay, all right, it did work out. Trust the process, everybody. Trust the process. I have one yard, two yards, three yards, four yards, five, six, seven yards of continuous bias binding. I'm just gonna fold this in half, press it, and wind it up. Then it's ready to go on my quilt. To recap, Cut your yardage in half at a 45 degree angle. Sew the short straight edges together. Make your first parallel cut from the bottom, leaving two inches at the top. Make the rest of your parallel cuts, leaving two inches at the bottom and the top. Trim off any excess that isn't wide enough for your binding. Make the last cut, leaving two inches at the bottom and cutting through the top. Sew your long edges together then cut apart the short connecting piece between cuts. You may have noticed that I also managed to get the stripes to match perfectly. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in another video that shows the tiny tweaks that it took to achieve that. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And if you want to never have to calculate your binding yardage or number of strips again, you can sign up to get the magical rainbow of binding at the link below in the show notes. Happy stitching.